Hey! Yes, hey! There's wasps in the pump house! The master of all jiggery. Today we gotta put these up there. So there they are. I went all the way across. The spacing is not the greatest, but there's, you know, studs in the way, top plate in the way, all kinds of things in the way, and we're guessing from the back. The rebar guys will have something to tie to now. Is the other side of our jiggery bolts. Looks a little wacky, but definitely serves a purpose. Guys are up there working, but thunder and a storm is rolling in. They almost have the front wall completely done, and they're working on the back wall now. Thunder is a rumbling. Oh, that's, that's a raindrop on me. A lot of rain came down in a short amount of time. Oh. fantastic getting some water Kathy you done there's wasps in the pump house so that's the end of day three with the framers they got this wool framed out and they finished front wall, so it looks good. That is ready. Tomorrow they're gonna finish the utility room wall that you see back there, and they're gonna fix the front entry that Rich and I did. Not that anything's really wrong with it, it just doesn't have the peak. So they're gonna just cut the peak for us at a 712 pitch, because that was the one thing that I couldn't figure out. quick explanation on the framing and how this is different than a normal house. The only part of the wall that holds any load is the first floor. So the first floor headers are designed to hold all the 2 by 10 floor joists and the 2 by 10 floor. The second level doesn't hold any load so the headers aren't that big of a deal second floor wall is built in place and the first thing they have to do is sheathe the back of the wall. That is going to be a backstop for the shot creek. Hey! Yes, hey! <laughs> and that has to be cut with a curve because we don't want to see that from the inside of our house. We need to use sheetrock or something else on the inside walls, not OSB. 
Then we have these two by six blocks that go in between the studs and those are drilled and 10 inch J bolts are bolted through that two by six through the OSB and hooked onto the I-beam of the dome. Then we felt the hole back and then the J bolts go in. And then after those J bolts go in, then we can put the sheathing on the front of the wall. So that's just a little explanation of what makes this framing slightly different than a normal house. The last four days have been a total whirlwind. The framers framed all our exterior walls. They framed them, sheathed them, felted them, did the jiggery in them, well Rich helped with that, and they Tyvek'd them. This wall, they couldn't sheathe it because of the way that we had to do the jiggery. We had to leave the front open. Um, so that we could do the electrical and get the insulation and everything else in there. So the sheathing on this wall has to wait. But it was quite the production. And they worked so hard in this heat wave. The first two days, they mostly spent working on this front wall. It was the biggest wall. And Rich and I wanted this wall done first because we knew we only had them for four days and we kind of had them do things in a priority of what we thought we could and could not do. And if you look at the size of this wall. It's a great wall. <laughs> it is. They it is built a great the great wall. wall. It's huge. It's 35 feet long. And once the cement, the concrete, which goes here and on the other side, there's like a six and a half foot wall of concrete that goes on each side. Six and a half foot wide, 13 and a half feet high down to eight feet. This entire front of this dome will be 48 feet wide. Yeah. And that is one heck of a porch. It really is. Ugh, yeah. I think it's a little over 24 feet high at the peak. It is, it is. And it seems higher right now because the um, cement is about two feet. Right, we're below grade. The final grade is not yeah. set yet. So that was something else for them to put in. We did the bottom half. You saw that. But they came in and, and they did an amazing job on the top half. And we'll just get, a, get inside quick and get a little view from the inside. So looking at it from the back side, you can see they felted it all. That had to be there for the backstop for the concrete, shotcrete actually. And this here is a four inch lip that sticks out so that the shotcrete has a stopper. If you look up a little bit higher, there's these, oh, I don't know if you see it, they're these little J bolts. And they have a double nut, a nut and a washer on each side of the OSB and they're tightened up. They can still be turned a little bit, but when the rebar guys come on Monday, there's 36 inch piece here that bends into an L and goes onto the backstop. That's another added security measure holding the wall to the rebar shell of the dome. So once they finished that wall, then they move to the back wall. This is the north wall. And they did the same thing. 
And it just looks so cool now that there's actually a floor in here. We can walk into the utility room. And they finished these floor joists for us. And they put some flooring down. And it's definitely looking more and more like a home. And then last but not least, they did the entryway door. So what I wanted to talk about really quick is the jiggery here on this door is different than the jiggery that we have on the other walls. So this OSB went directly against the tube, the I-beam here. So we had those U-bolts that we used instead. And the reason this is only a half of a gable is because the other half is concrete that somehow will find a way to kind of close this area off and connect. And what do you got there, honey? The framer was nice enough to leave me a 712 pitch sort of template to, you know, put it up there and I'll be able to match the angle nice and easy without having to do much thinking. Which is great. That's really helpful. <laughs> they were just a great bunch of guys. They were really awesome. So a lot of people have mentioned some concerns about these walls and the security of them um, as far as being able to fall forward. They can't fall backwards because the dome is there, but they could go forwards in a strong wind or something else, people said. So we just wanted to share with you all the different things that are holding these walls in place. And this is not the perfect wall to use an ex as an example, but the first thing we have are all these J-bolts. These are 10 inch J-bolts and they are tightened up. They are, they go through. A block of two by six. A, yeah, they go through a block of two by six. And they're tied to the I-beam directly to the I-beam and tightened up. And they're every three feet, the entire way, all the way up and around and down. The wall itself is also anchor bolted in every three feet with a seven inch anchor wedge. At the base, yep. Through the sill plate. The walls are tied together. There are hurricane straps on the wall. The wall itself, like the floor, the floor joists are incorporated into the wall and attached to the interior walls, which are also anchor bolted into the concrete floor. And some of the interior walls also have J bolts that go out and also grab onto the rebar. In addition, we have this beam, which goes literally right through our wall in the center of the dome that will also help stabilize everything. And then last but not least, those little J bolts up there will hold L's made of rebar that will be tied 36 inches long onto the rebar on the dome. And that will provide another added security measure to prevent that front wall from being able to pull away from the concrete. The only part of the framing that will actually be visible above the concrete is that tiny little peak. And again, these floor joists are tied into the front wall, which the floor joists are then tied into the flooring here, which is also anchor bolted down and everything is hurricane tied together. So it actually is pretty secure. I don't think it could go anywhere. I am uh, the master of all jiggery. Yeah. Hi. Jiggery is my specialty. <laughs> this is so true. So true. So we're really happy that the framers came and got those three walls finished for us. We were on a very tight deadline, literally less than a week before the Shot Creek guys come. Tomorrow, the electrician is coming and we're gonna get the Smurf tube and all the boxes, which very few, but they're gonna go in tomorrow, hopefully. And then on Monday, the rebar guys are gonna come. They're gonna finish all the rebar and they're gonna help us with the foam. So this weekend, Rich and I, we're going to focus on the foam. Clock is ticking. Sure is. And we'll see you on the next video. Oh, honey.
Look at the canopy. Oh my God. I can fix it. <laughs> what? We can fix that. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Honey, you fixed it twice already. Just a little water. <laughs> Just a little water. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. I shouldn't have done that. Now I'm, now I'm soaked. Aww. All right.